So, Lego Star Wars. I mean, I don't gotta explain what this is to you, right? The first entry in a widely successful gaming franchise about taking equally beloved film franchises, smushing them down into brick form and making fun levels based on the film's best, and sometimes worst, scenes. Right? We all get it, right? I played it. You played it. It's like a fucking Star Wars. And yeah, it's pretty much already been talked to death at this point. But there's one area, one mode, I've barely seen anyone cover, or even as much mention. See, LEGO Star Wars is a lot of things. It's a platformer, a puzzle game, a beat-em-up, that game where the most rancid people in comment sections get their profile pictures from, the game with the funny screams. Ah! But what if I told you LEGO Star Wars was also a fighting game? You see, Child Me would play and replay this game religiously, entering the many numbered doors to endlessly replay these levels again and again and again. Except the door to episode 3, because all those levels kind of suck balls, but... Yeah, come to think of it, same with episode 2, but yeah, whatever, whatever. But there was always this one door that eluded me. The one to the far left, separated from the rest. The one simply named the two-player zone. You see, you try to go in. Oh, for just a peek. Just a peek, good sir. Only to be pushed away. As if the game's taunting you. As if the game's saying, Sorry, it's the two-player zone. We ain't even gonna let you get a glimpse. Come back when you've got a plus one. Bitch. And growing up with no one to play video games with, I was always left wondering. But not today! With the incredible advent of owning a second video game controller, we can now see what was buried deep in the bowels of this godforsaken realm. And it's a fighting game. Now, this isn't that much of a surprise. It's actually quite common for beat em ups to tack on a sort of versus mode. I mean, you just take a game where two players are already beating the crap out of a million other things and just give them the option to beat up on each other. And boom, a little extra content for your NES port of an arcade game. Eh, needless to say, these usually ended up being half-baked, shallow, and unbalanced as all hell, but we'll get to that in a minute. Although, even if half-baked, a Star Wars fighting game has always been something fans have been foaming at the mouth for for years. And coming in at a staggering 100 plus playable characters, you can recreate any Star Wars grudge match under the sun. Darth vs. Luke, Yoda vs. Palpatine, the Royal Guard vs. the Bespin Guard. So even if possibly horribly shallow, its sheer roster size alone at least makes it somewhat worth a shot. So. I grabbed a couple of buddies and we played it a bit. And here's what I found. A competitive rundown of a tacked on fighting game mode in a game that has no business being a fighting game. Here's how the game works. You and your opponent select your character from the available roster. Groundbreaking stuff, I know. But after that, the game also randomly selects a handful of other characters for you as well, which you and your opponent can switch to on the fly at any time in game. I can't really tell if there's a pattern to what the game decides to choose for you. The ones that always seem like a guarantee are a random Sith, Astromech, Protocol Droid, and a High Jump character, but the rest are always a bit up in the air. As for the stages you actually play on, you have a pretty healthy selection of maps, each with their own stage hazards and interactable elements, all that good stuff. But scattered around the arena, sometimes in plain view, sometimes hidden in breakable objects, are power orbs which not only grant you full invincibility, but double damage, causing your opponent to just sort of have to run away from you for a full minute. The bare minimum score is a first to five, but you can crank that sucker all the way up to a first to 50 if you're feeling crazy. But with how quick you can die, it seems like the most reasonable option is a first to 10. But of course, what's a fighting game without a good old fashioned tier list? Now, 
Most of the characters in this are heavily ability based, with most of them taking movesets, animations, and general quirks straight from each other. In other words, a lot of the characters are just clones of each other. So we won't be really talking about any specific characters, unless they do have something unique or genuinely interesting about them. So for the most part, I'll just be lumping them into groups. Going into it, I already had a pretty good idea of how the list would fare out, especially with the highest and the lowest tiers. And starting with the highest tiers, the ghosts. Banned. Completely, totally banned. Considering you kind of need to be able to hurt your opponent in order to beat them, or for them to at least be even remotely corporeal. But, the problem with that being, you know how I said the game will just randomly plop characters in your lap for you to change between? Well, sometimes they'll just throw in a ghost for fun. So it's generally an unspoken rule to try and not use the ghosts, even if they do appear on the list. And at the bottom of the list, characters that don't do shit. Spoiler alert, all the characters in this tier can't actually attack. Which, you know, is kind of the fucking point of a fighting game. Or have abilities that are otherwise incompatible with killing the opponent. And unfortunately, sitting at the very, very bottom, we have a fan favorite. The Gonk Droid. Can't attack, can't jump, and he's the slowest damn character in the game. But goddammit, he's giving it his all. Look at him. Look at him. And right after that, we have the P-Droids. Protocols, the Pits, and the PK droids. Definitely faster than Gonk, but not by much. Then the kids, although actually able to use their feet to leave the ground, aren't much faster than a regular character tiptoeing, so... Not super ideal. Hey, uh... Editing in Postful Ranger 22 over here, um... When I originally made the script, I I just sort of assumed in my mind, like, oh, both uh both young Anakin and young Boba Fett are uh, child characters. Uh, so I, I figured they both uh, suffered the same speed issue. But upon further investigation, no, uh, Anak young Anakin moves just fine. Uh, baby Boba, Boba Fett boy, as he's called, is just a uniquely terrible character, so... Anakin gets to move up a tier, yay! Does this matter? Not really, they both still can't actually fight, but... Whatever, clarification for clarification's sake. Then the regular characters that can't fight. They can move at regular speed, but can't even as much as throw a punch. Why did they put them in the fucking game? Why did they model Dexter Jexter's ass crack? I mean, I know why, but still, why? Ooh, but up next, we have some characters that can actually do something. The Astromex and Zapper characters. Basically, Zappers are an extremely short range attack that instead of hurting your opponent, will stun them for a pretty substantial amount of time, but only if the character is playing as a droid. Now, this sounds like a pretty good ability on paper, being unable to actually harm your opponent, sure, but leaving them completely unable to defend themselves for that long, it's basically a guaranteed death for the opponent. But these characters come with some major flaws that make them essentially useless, those being the flaws with stuns in general. When stunned, you can just simply swap off the character you are currently playing and the stun will just immediately go away. Hell, you can just swap off the droid you're playing, and immediately swap back and keep playing like nothing happened. And even ignoring that the counterplay to a stun is as easy as pressing a button, the fact that you have to practically hug the opponent for it even to work, followed up by the fact that this only works against droids, which A, don't even make up half the cast, and B, are some of the shittiest characters in the game, with few exceptions, so why would you even want to counter specifically them? make the Zapper characters just really, really bad. But actually ranking the Zappers amongst themselves? Jawa and Ugnaught are both as slow as the child characters, so you're pretty much hopeless of ever getting in on your opponent. The Astromex fare a bit better, with the ability to move at a regular speed and even being able to hover for a limited time. 
But the best one out of the Zapper Bunch is a Watto, baby. He's miserably slow on the ground, but with the tap the A button, he can fly around impressively fast. If for whatever reason you think going for a Zapper character is a good idea, he's your best choice. And finally, the king of shit tier, fittingly, we have Jar Jar Banks. Interesting case here. He still can't throw a punch, but my god, my boy can jump. He's fine enough in a pinch, like, if you're just swapping through the characters to find the one you want, he's not bad to have in the character pool. Don't know why anyone would ever choose him outright, though. Now, going up a tier, we have characters who can actually fight! What a concept, what a premise. But I mean, just because they can attack doesn't mean they're, like, good at it. Like, at all. But let's get into that. We have Tier G, all comprised of battle droids. They're slow, and they can't actually jump, but now that we actually have a blaster, let's talk about them. Blaster characters are pretty okay, at least when fighting each other. But against some of the other character types we'll see in this list, they get outclassed pretty hard. And sadly, even among their own peers, battle droids just aren't very good. Their fire speed is just slower than all the other characters for some reason. Mm, not good. Next tier. Now on to the next tier, the joke characters. Let that sink in for a minute. There are characters in this game I would consider worse than the characters you pick just to have a laugh. They're so bad it isn't even funny. And the first character I would consider a joke pick is the Ewoks. They have a different sort of projectile, little slingshot rock thing, which is honestly kind of shit, but it fires fast, and them being able to jump at least lets them dodge somewhat despite being as slow as the other short characters. They're silly, they're cute, they're a little bit fun. And comprising the rest of the joke character tier, we have the melee-only characters. These characters don't have a blaster or lightsaber, instead opting to beat the shit out of their opponents with a battle axe, a spear, or just their own fucking fist, like, uh! Now, melee in this game's a little bit weird. If you and your opponent are just swinging at each other, both hits just sorta cancel each other out. So it's just a game of who gets tired of mashing first to see who wins that interaction. But they move decently and can attack reliably, so pretty okay. Getting a little better in the E tier, but I'm still not super sure where to place these two. The Genosian and the Super Battle Droid. On one hand, the Genosian is incredibly fast, being able to fly just like Watto, the only two characters in the game with that ability. But they share the same issue with the Battle Droid, that being their firing is extremely slow and incredibly laggy on the ground or in the air but bonus points for randomly choosing between green or red blasters. Uh, that's a that's a nice touch, I like that. I always like the green ones. They are <laughs> As for the super battle droid, it's the opposite. His fight rate is really damn good, but his lack of a jump holds him back. Jump shotting is a pretty important technique for blaster characters to have, being able to shoot while retreating and dodging shots, so that's why the lack of a jump has him down here so low. Speaking of jumps, moving on to characters that have not one, but two jumps. But the second jump they have, they'd be better off without. We have the Stormtroopers, who also have a slow rate of fire, but can avoid that entirely just by jump shotting. But if you accidentally press the jump button again, it will have them double jump, which unlike other characters we'll get to, has them landing flat on their face, leaving them completely vulnerable for an extended period of time unless you swap characters. So I mean, they can sorta hang with the other blaster guys, but they're definitely a little bit worse. Now, the rest of E tier are separated by two character types, single jumpers who do and don't have melee attacks. Now, when I talked earlier about the melee-only characters, I mentioned that the melee attacks aren't really super reliable and tend to whiff when going up against each other. But when having to face off against a Jedi who wants to get all up in your face, it's pretty damn important to have a melee to potentially beat out or even nullify their attacks, rather than trying to blast them as they cut you down. That being said, the best single jumpers with melee have to be the Wookiees, with super fast punches and even the ability to one-shot both stormtroopers and clone troopers. 
Now, all the way up here in C tier, we have the best of the best of the Blaster characters, with their own special skill, the Double Jump Shot. Now, on top of having a double jump just being really good for the extra movement, if you mash the fire button right as your character lands, you'll be able to do a burst fire of three super fast shots. It's great to use at a distance, and it's great for shredding health up close. Who knew being able to delete three-fourths of your opponent's health with one move would be so useful? The best out of these bunch definitely have to be the Fords, or just all the Han Solos plus Indy. They fire so fast, and even have a built-in step dodge if you press the attack button as a laser is about to hit them. For some reason, the Luke's double jump is a little bit longer than the others, but they can still pull it off. The only other interesting note of the D tier would have to be Admirable, Admirable, Admiral Akbar. He's the only character in the game with the double jump, but no melee. And on top of that, for whatever reason, his double jump is ridiculously high. Jumping about as high as a Jedi character, which I'm not super sure is either really a positive or a negative. Movement and dodging is always a good thing, right? But the extra hang time does make it a lot more reactable, but still good to have overall. And right above the solos in C tier, we have a handful of the Bounty Hunters. What places the Bounty Hunters above even the solos is their bomb ability, which while for the most part is really slow, has the ability to one-shot most any character in the game. But bombs do come with their own issues. For one, they're slow and generally awkward to aim and use, and it has the tendency to kill its user if used right up close, which also awards the enemy a free point, so basically you've achieved nothing. Though I guess if you take an early lead and just repeatedly bomb your enemy in the face, I guess that's a way to win. Sure. IG-88 is definitely the worst of these characters, not having a double jump and a slow melee. And notably, Zam Wessel, also having no double jump, has a significantly faster bomb toss than the rest, maybe next to Boba and Django, but we'll get to them later. Boss, Greedo, and Dengar are just generally all around good, have all the things the solos have and more. Now on to B tier, where we house all the Jedi, and honorary Jedis. Saber users tend to absolutely destroy blaster users, being able to pretty easily deflect or avoid their projectiles, getting in and hacking them to pieces. And they even have other techniques like jump slashes for getting in fast with attack, and timed attacks and ground smashes to break through guards. At the end of the day, the best counter to a Jedi is another Jedi. We do have three outliers at the bottom of B tier, however. The Magna Guard, Captain Tarples, and General Grievous. All three of these characters share one thing in common, being the high jump ability. But unlike the other melee-centric characters we've covered in the joke character tier, who lack a lot of things to help them keep up with the Jedi characters, these guys have the range, movement, and ability to deflect shots to help them keep up with the Saber users. Well, I mean, Grievous does use fucking lightsabers, but you know what I mean. Worst of this pack has to be Captain Tarples, only having access to the jump slash and not the time slashes or the ground slam, making him worthless against other saber users. And with further testing, I did find that he has surprisingly low range with his spear. Honestly, this might put him down to joke character tier, but at least you have a high jump and can still reflect projectiles, so theoretically that puts him on the same shoulders as the other B tiers, but you'll have to put in a lot of work. Luckily, Magna Guard fares a lot better than Tarples, having great range, uninterruptible slashes, and the far superior ground slam. The only issue is he doesn't have access to time slashes, so he can't threaten a character who just sits and blocks all day without going for a ground slam, which is easily telegraphed by him being a high jumper. Still great against blaster characters though. And besides Grievous also sharing a high jump and not having force powers, and Yoda just being kinda of goddamn slow without his saber, the rest of this tier are basically the same. No differences to note or anything, just different flavors of lightsaber dude. Now. A tier is where we get to the real funny business, the real broken shit. A tier consists of three characters, the Siths, which all share the unique ability of Sith powers, with Dooku and Palpatine sharing Force Lightning, and Vader having his Force Choke. And these are busted. 
with the ability's generous range, instant activation, and ability to push people away, you basically get to control the entire neutral with literally just the press of a button. As soon as things start to get messy, you can just say nope and push them off you. You'll be able to turtle for as long as you want to. And can even infinitely stun them just by tapping the button over and over, with the only thing to save them being the character swapping spam and retreating. A character who can not only shut down blaster characters, but saber characters as well. Now, notice I said Siths, but Darth Maul is in B tier with the rest of the Jedi. Well, that's because Maul doesn't actually get any Sith powers. He's just a Jedi with a red sword and kinda slow attacks. Now for the cream of the crop, we are in S tier territory, with Forlom, Jango Fett, and Boba Fett. Now I know what you're thinking, this whole time I've been preaching that Saber characters are just so much better than Blaster characters, but then I put a couple of Blaster characters in S tier? How does that work? One word. Damage output. Well, that's two words. Why the fuck did I write one word in the script? Damage output. You see, like the other tiers, these three characters all share one trait in common. They do two hearts of damage instead of one. Remember the power orbs I mentioned in the gameplay breakdown? Remember the fact that they give full invincibility and double damage? Basically, if you manage to get at least one shot while this is active, you can one shot any character in the game. On top of having a bomb that, while finicky, also one shots anything in the game without a power orb. The Fets also get access to a jetpack, allowing them to glide through the air, giving them extra movement to dodge blaster shots, and making them harder to hit with sabers. With the Jango Fett though, things are a little more complicated. Standing or floating still, he'll fire his two pistol shots slowly one after the other. But if you jump or move, it fires both at the same time, making it way more practical. So just something to keep in mind. And finally, the moment you have all been waiting for. The single best character in this game, who isn't outright banned, but probably should be, the Droidica. He has a, he has a shield. Is, is that why? Is that why? He has a shield. Okay, so the shield. And this shit is ridiculous, folks. Takes nine slashes of a lightsaber to take down and is completely invulnerable to all blasters. Now, granted, it can also be taken down with a single slam attack, but if you're doing a slam attack right in Droidica's face, you're kind of fucking dead. And to top it all off, as soon as your shield's gone, all you have to do is swap off the character and immediately swap back and it'll be like nothing happened. You'll have full shield. And if you think this thing's defense was crazy, oh boy. Just wait till you hear the offense. This thing shoots four blaster bolts, each doing one full heart of damage. This thing can one-shot you. And it will one-shot you. Consistently. Especially with the orb. Like with Boba, one stray blaster bolt and you're dead. Now there are only two things in the game that can reliably harm a Droidica shield. A bomb from a bounty hunter and a shot from another Droidica. Yep, we have a character with the best damage in the game, the best defense in the game, and its only decent counter is itself. Yikes. And with that being said, that caps off the LEGO Star Wars Duel Mode. And I mean, is it a deep, well-balanced fighting game experience? No, not at all. But is it a fun fighting game? Yeah, I'd say it's a decent bit of fun to play. It's certainly easy to pick up and have fun with for a few minutes. Before I wrap this up, I feel like I should mention the online. Through something like the Xbox, you have to play through online servers, which I didn't get to test at all, so I don't know how good those are. But via Steam, the only way to play with a friend is through remote play. So, although having a solid connection may be a bit questionable, at least only one person has to own the game to enjoy the battle mode. I think what really makes this interesting as a fighting game is just the very weird and interesting unique interactions the characters have, which I guess is kind of defeated by the meta being solely wrapped around countering one character. Holy shit, this is just brawl. The polarizing balance. The character-specific tech. 
the overbearing top tier. It's all brawl. Turn it off. Get me out of here. I'm done. Video over. By the way, if I get 100 subscribers, I will do a Watto percent run of this game. <laughs>